Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome in. It's Liesl from Artist Palette. Get yourselves comfortable. You can see my paint palette here. I have a mixing palette on the side. Some brushes on the side that I will go over in just a second. And uh, I won't bore you with the details, but I only have the painting here on my phone to display. Also, you can look at the painting on our Facebook page. You can look at it on our websites for reference too. So I'm using a 12 by 16 canvas. You can use any size. You can use an eight by 10, something smaller, or you can use something uh, a lot bigger. So my favorite brush is this large kind of mop brush. You can see it's a round three quarter inch or an inch you can use. Really good for blending. You can also use a flat one too, as long as it's pretty soft. It's great. And I have a flat medium and a round medium. It's uh, You don't need to use these brushes too often. It's good for um, just putting, if you don't want to use this big brush and you want to do smaller detailed work with the background or the shrubbery in the foreground here, you can use these. But of course we need a nice pointy detailed brush. You can have a number zero and a number two. You can have a, this is a number four, nice and pointy, it will still work. You can have a number zero with it. So pretty important. And I have a ruler on the side because I find that it's just kind of helpful to get more of the straight lines that you want. I would say use a ruler if you're not very good at sketching things out with your free hand, you're not very confident with it, and a pencil to get the outline of the Eiffel Tower. But you can also wing it with just a paintbrush, so it's not like you have to do it um, with a, a pencil. So one of the first things that I wanted to start with is actually just sketching out the Eiffel Tower. I feel like it's probably easiest when you have it sketched out. Um, the only problem with it is if you put a lot of paint over top of your Eiffel Tower, it tends to cover your pencil marks or pick up your pencil marks and spread a lot of gray. So you can always rewind, you know, you can pause, take your time throughout this video, you can go back and then draw it in after you do the background. So you have options. I'm gonna do it first. Let's just go over the paint colors. I have white, black, typical stuff, and then my primary colors, which is uh, primary yellow, phthalo blue, bright red. This is the non-orange kind. If you get orange kind, you're not going to get good purples. You're going to get brown, and um, you're not going to get pink. So I, I said optional colors also are, you can use like a, a, a violet, or this is a mauve pale purple, and also magenta. So you can also use a magenta if you want to get some nice pinky purples. Okay, and my water cup, make sure you have a paper towel too. Let's start sketching out this Eiffel Tower together. Okay, so you can see that the Eiffel Tower is pretty much dead in the center. And if you, if you want to measure all the way across and be like, okay, this is exactly, we already know it's a six, 12 by 16. But if you wanted to um, be technical, you could just go right into the middle of where it's going to sit. And this will be your center line. So somewhere around here. <clears throat> you can just put a, a light mark here and just follow that up. Not, not all the way up here. We want to have a good, for my 12 by 16, a good inch or maybe an inch and a half from the top where it's going to stand. And I'm just going to bring that down because then I can pretty much get things symmetrical when I have that center line. Okay, so at the top here, we're going to work our way to there. At the bottom, let's get that A frame. You can see just the shape of it. it has like a nice little dip and curve 
You see that curve? It's not a straight line. It's kind of going really narrow and then it just gradually wings out to more of a curve on each side. So if you want to just go for it, so up here, I'm just going to now oops, start with a basic shape. Okay, we're going to start up here nice and narrow and then just like the letter A, you're going to just make it really narrow for a pretty long time before you start winging it out pretty wide. And then in, once you have that middle line, you can eyeball it and see what side is off. Or if you want to make it bigger, you can make it bigger. You're going, okay, this is not wide enough for my liking. I'm also going to put about an inch from the bottom of where I'm not putting my Eiffel Tower because I want to have, I want to not go far down where if you put grass and stuff over top, you don't want to lose that nice arch there. Okay, so make sure you're happy with the size. Happy with the size. And since I'm using pencil, it's perfect. I can just change it up to my liking, erase anything. Okay, so starting from the bottom, pretty easy. We're going to do a, a nice arch dome shape. So roughly, if you want to use your ruler, you can, oops, very sorry about that. You can measure out how thick you want it to be on each side. I'm going to do it the simple way and just take a, a gander on what it's going to, you know, what looks right. So just make sure it comes up a little bit too. You want it to kind of a little bit higher on that arch, not too, not too low. See, I went a little bit higher. And around the halfway point from this line, so from top to bottom, around your halfway point is where this, um, this ledge is kind of sticking out from. So that's a good reference point. So if you're looking, okay, this is about 23 centimeters. I'm going to go eh, somewhere around here. We can do this around the halfway point, something like that. So this is, we're going to just do a nice, line going across and you know uh the shape of a trapezoid something like this it's a little bit wider at the top goes in and then straight across so it sticks out a little bit of that sticking out point now i know that this is all the top part here where it's kind of solid filled in and you can put that just make it nice and narrow at the top and you want to keep it all the way through not too wide so just check that part so this is all going to be filled in i could just do that whatever close to the top here i have a little bit of space for another little basically a rectangle so just a little tiny bit wider than the top the very top part of where this ends that you put it and then just a little line in the center easy okay so between here and here we have another little ledge that we're going to make same shape but bigger. This is not too far above where this is sitting. So let's go a little bit above that, about a centimeter or you know, whatever you think is proportionate across. Out a little bit, like that trapezoid I was talking about. And then meeting with that side. And now I'm going to fill in the shape in between. So a little bit from the top here, sh uh, shorter line, and then just mimic the shape. Very easy, right? Just mimic the shape. It's going to come down and touch the bottom of this, of this ledge. There we go. I know Eiffel Towers are like super frustrating for people after teaching them over and over again. I figured this is probably the best way to make your Eiffel Tower and not have to worry about symmetry and not stress out about what goes where. Okay, what do we think? You can type in comments, you can 
say, oh my gosh, that was super easy, super fun, and not complicated whatsoever. I'm gonna get rid of this line, and then we're gonna start painting. So I press pretty hard with my pencil marks. If you press light, that's okay. Just press harder to solidify where everything is, because I want to, I want to make sure that it can still see it when I start painting. All right, now I'm going to use my mixing palette. Let's get started with some colors. So just give me one second. I'm going to, oh geez. Give me one second. We're going to start with our light colors. We always want to start with the light colors and then work our way out because it's just easier. You don't muddy up your, your paint water. So with my very large brush, let's just dip that lightly in the water. Light colors that we're going to start with, it's actually easier to start with just plain white. So you can see I have a lot of white here. I'm just going to paint a little bit around here and just very lightly tap into the areas that we know are going to be in the background. I am going over my pencil marks a little bit. I can still see it. Whether you can see it or not is... <laughs> A different thing but that's okay just all around you can see how high up it goes pretty close to the top just dab around in the background a little bit of white again down at the bottom So I'm going outwards more. You could get all of this painted white because it's a good um, it's a good spot to start when you want to blend colors into the white because it's already white. It will blend lighter into this white section. It makes it easier. All right, here we go. I think I have a good amount for my blending. Now, I'm going to not wash this off, don't need to. Let's start with, let's start with a light orange. I don't like starting with blue green colors. It taints everything else. Not a huge deal, but anyway, orange colors. So take a scoop of your white. You don't want to diddle daddle here after you just put the white and put it there for a reason. And like a, you know, a little pea size of yellow. You get, so you can also use a lemon yellow, but I find primary yellow is a bit warmer looking. And just a little dot or two of red. You have to take a little dot because see here, it looks like a nice orangey peach color. It's not too red or salmon looking. Too much red will overpower the yellow. If I another dip of red is looking on the pink side, so you just be mindful of that. And you can start with this. I know it's not the lightest color, but this is where you can just see if I just start on the way further out, not all the way out here where the purple is. You don't need to paint where you don't need to, but I know it's all around this area. So out on the outskirts of that white that we just put, dab. Dab, 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 dab. A little bit up here, a little bit less. And then you can wipe off some of the extra paint because sometimes when you mix, it has way too much paint in here. You can actually take a little pea size of white now and start dabbing closer into the middle. I'm gonna go down here. Just very light taps. You don't need to press this hard. It will come, it will look a little bit more faded overall, which is great. And then I will just wash that off. It's important to wash it off with when you're trying to blend into white because paint will carry over really easily. I dried it a little bit more. I don't want my brush 
too watery. It can has a little bit of water, but too watery. You'll notice that it starts looking wishy-washy. It has all these streaks going through it. This is a more solid look and the dabbing gives it that galaxy look. Now this is where I said you can switch to a smaller round or something like that of, um, for the brush. You can take more white with a touch of your orange that you just made. You just wipe off a little extra of the paint. We don't need a whole ton and just put it into your liking as much as you want to, like a few little dabs coming in further. You could do the opposite thing with just plain white and have white come in more into this color, but you just have to be careful because white will pick up all of the colors and start filling it in with more of that yellowy color. Anyways, when it's dry, if you want to wait for it to dry and touch up on the white, you can. So I'm gonna use my finger here. It just picks up the excess. It makes, and I like to swirl it. It gives it a nice, um, very consistent look. It looks like it's, you don't see any brush strokes there. And you start from here out. You could also just use a blending brush if you have one. Okay, so that. I have done. Now I want to move on with the same large brush. Squeeze out any extra water. We want it to be mostly a dry brush technique. We're going to go to a bit of a pink color because it's going to add a buffer into the purple. So if you have magenta, just use magenta. It's exactly magenta. Otherwise, take a little bit of red and some white. See that pink? I add a touch more red. I don't want it Kind of like the hot pink type of look. And start just on the outskirts, just like that, dab around. Use up most of your paint around the edges and then start dabbing into the orange just a little bit. So just a little bit, we dab into there. See how it gives it a nice blend? It gives it a bit of a deeper orange here and there. And I'm going to now, or with a blending brush, see, just do that. I find a blending brush is really good, but make sure the brush, if you are using it, is completely, mostly dry. It's like very dry, because then you get these streaky marks. dry brush here, you just dab it and blend it out. Here we go. Perfect. Then you can use a little bit more of your pink. If you want more pink, right, you can put more pink into the, the edges in the corners of your sky or bring it in more to your orange if you want it to take up more of a space around here. So just do what makes you happy. Don't force things just because you, you think you see a different color somewhere and you prefer it that if you prefer a different way, do it that way. There we go. Bit more of a nice little blend here. Wash that off. So now I'm going to use my large brush, squeeze out all of that water as best I can, dry it pretty well on my napkin. And you can take your time here. We're gonna start going to a bit of a purple. So I was telling you before, you can use a premixed violet or um, you can add some blue to your magenta. I'm going to I'm going to show you how I mix it. So I'm actually going to use a bit of a smaller brush at first to mix it. Let's take into the same spot. Let's do it. Red, touch of white. We need a little bit of white in here. Otherwise, it's going to be super super dark. And then. Just 
start with like this much blue. You know, you want it to still be, look how purple it turns with this, a tiny little bit of blue. See how you like it? Yeah, definitely a pinky purple. Nice. So you can be a little tiny bit more random at this point with the purple. Even if you go to the corner here, this blue will cover pretty much anything in the dark blue will cover anything, but you can be, with, take a little bit of this. I like to use my smaller round dab more in pockets instead of it being like, you know, yellow to orange to pink to purple. You can have more of a purple is popping out only in some spots type of thing. I don't mind it mixing with a bit of orange either. It's kind of fun, but it makes. And I am saving the darker violet and darker colors for after I do green to the blue over here, just because on top of wet paint, it doesn't blend very well. Wet on top of wet after a certain point doesn't blend super well. that off. This is my large, more dry mixing brush. I just circle it afterwards. Nothing on it, right? Just circle it outwards. Give it that nice faded smooth look. I'm going to wait for that to dry. So I'm moving over here. I can touch up and come back later to put more oranges, for example, back in stuff like that. So it's very forgiving. Don't try to do it all at once. All right, so I'm going to mix my color. We're going to start with a nice minty green. So if you have minty green, or what's called, you can, I'll show you an emerald green, it kind of looks a bit minty, emerald green. You can use a little bit of this to blend it into the white. White, of course, dot of blue, and a little dot of yellow. So close to equal parts, you get this, I find you get this light minty green. You can go on the more teal side if you want more blue, but believe me, it will go more blue. So I would say start with that light green. Start on the outside of your yellow. Just dab it in like we did before. Go as far into the white as you want to, right? You can go even in here. You're feeling it. You can use your large brush. I don't mind going a little further out because it welcomes the blue to blend with it and makes it a bit more teal as well. And stop whenever you feel like it. Kind of similar to what we did over here on the other side. Then you can just take white on your brush. You can wash it off, which especially if you have too much paint on your brush, I would wash it off. Just take plain white. I'm just going right up to my Eiffel Tower and making it look like it's more faded from in outwards. Okay, and from here, let's go to a bit of a light blue with only a dot of the screen. So actually mix on top of this. I have a little bit of paint left. If you have a lot of paint mixed with a small little section, you're going to add white and pea size of blue. Just right on top. It picks up a little bit of that. I hardly had any, so I don't <laughs> see it looks just like light blue. Let's start out here. I'm going to actually switch to my larger brush now. 
but I'm going to get all this paint off, go right outside of the green. And then where's my large brush? I'm going to take that little touch of this blue, maybe just a little bit, and just dab it into the dab. While it's still wet, this is what we want. We don't want the green to be dry. We will not do what we want it to do. See that fade? It's going to, it gives it a bit of a teal transition into light sky blue. So this side is way more forgiving than this side. This side, because orange is close to purple, we get this weird color in between until you go back and add it in. Or if you waited for the orange to completely dry. But anyways, I'm going to go back in and add in the orange. So this is my dry brush. I'm going to go up here, dab it over on the side. A little bit here so I can have a bit of purple coming in. Yeah, have it meet between the two sections. I am going below the line, as you can see, because I just want to be safe and not have any just weird, awkward gaps. All right, so that's definitely blended. What I like to do from here, plain blue. I haven't washed off this brush, by the way, plain blue. If you need to, you can add the tiniest little touch of water if it's too dry, right? You'll know if it's too dry. It's just not, it's just um, starting to get a little bit rigid. But anyways, too much water is no good. So plain blue, nice little chunk of that. Go right to the corner because it's going to get a nice uh, base coat for when we get into darker indigo or blue and black for a deep midnight blue. If you could use like Prussian blue if you have that as a deep blue color coming in on the corners. See how this big brush can be a little intrusive. So I'm going to just get this filled in for now um, into the corner on the sides, lightly tap into this lighter blue before I switch to a smaller brush or use your finger. If it's still wet enough, you can use your finger. If not, just use a brush. So wipe off extra paint if you're trying to blend it into here because you don't want to just put a whole bunch of dark blue into your light blue. And I'm going back to that round, smaller round brush to merge these together. Just blend that out a little bit there. So what I'm going to do is put in my purple and then actually let's, let's start with the, yeah, I'm going to put my purple to my blue and then I'll touch up on the orange. So I'll wait to the last minute there so that this dries a bit more. This is already pretty dry. Yeah. Nicely dried. So you can come in with more of a deeper violet. I would say two parts red, one part blue, because it's still, blue is still really powerful. And into the same spot, or if you mix it fresh, just a dot of white. I think you can get, I put that dot of white. On here, it looks really dark. But when I go up here, see, it's, uh, okay, it's still very dark, <laughs> but it's supposed to be dark over here. I guess if I just kind of blend it out a bit more, you can see more of the purple. 
I'll add actually a touch more white just so that you can see more of the purple color. The violet. There. I'm wiping off the extra paint. And I just put some in pockets throughout where I put the lighter pink purple. I do need to put second coats on this purple. It's a very interesting color with the vibrancy not going to how we want it at first. It's, um, yeah, it's something that I need to do a second coat with. So red, some white for a hot pink again. And just a little touch of purple. See the pinky purple, mostly pink, so a hot pink with a little tiny scoop of your violet that you just put over here. I just want to freshen up and deepen up the contrast of the so-called magenta color. I need to have this merge at some point. So I'm getting a little bit closer. It's going to get more into blues and purples, deeper violet purples, not too much of the pink color. I'll show you with a touch of magenta on my brush. Fine magenta is really nice. It just gives it a nice pink before I go into, because I'm going to touch up on the orange. Don't worry, I'm going to get there. A little bit of pink just around that edge. So that magenta, so that's just mostly red and white, but also magenta pre-mixed is nice and vibrant too. And I'm going to put orange here to blend that out. It mixes pretty well with a hot pink. With purple, it doesn't mix the, the greatest. Okay, so to just finish up some of the dark colors in the background, I wanna take a, a violet first, and then we're gonna put blue all around the corner to kind of bring it in so that it's continuous all the way around. So back to that violet, remember that dark violet? I'm gonna take, um, this is actually a lot of blue, don't know why I took that much but two parts red, one part blue. It looks all, it looks basically black right here. So add that little touch of white, not too much, but still let it be dark just so it doesn't look too black. I don't wanna go that dark that quick. Bring this in. And just lightly tap. I'm gonna wipe off the extra paint now. Lightly tap into some of that lighter purple Wipe off the paint as you keep blending it in. Tap, tap, tap. Wipe it off. Keep going. Because when I do this, I pick up more paint on my brush and I need to wipe it off again. It happens. See, this is the more finicky side because we're going from we're doing complementary colors that are opposite of each other. Yellow, orange to purple, definitely not a good mixing combination, but they look great together. So lightly tap, see just a little light taps into this blue because it will, when you have hardly any paint on, so make sure you wiped it all off. What it does is it just looks like it's transparent going on top of this blue, it just deepens the blue color. Now, if you're having troubles with these colors and you're, you're maybe you're getting a lot of brown or you're not sure why you're getting a lot of brown. It could be because number one over on the side, you're adding too much blue with your purple close to your orange. That's how you get brown or brownish colors. So you want to wait for it to fully dry, get a blow dryer and don't worry. You just go over it when it's completely dry, start fresh a little bit on the side and work your way out, but let the orange dry before you do purple so that you don't get that problem again. All 
All right. Now I'm going to touch up on that orange like I said I was going to do because I want it to be right in between this pink and this yellowy color. So if you have, unless yours is already great, then just leave it. So yellow, if you're looking more of an actual orange, yellow, dot of red, remember that, dot of red. You can add one extra dot of red if it's if you want that extra little orange. It looks like kind of like a mac and cheese color. And only see, like a little bit of light yellow or um, a little bit of white. Too much white will give it a peachy cream color. So if you're going for actual orange, hardly any white, just a touch. And make sure maybe you add two dots of red into it to get see that nice orange. Start blobbing that in. And go right along the edges of this pink. So be mindful that you may, may have to change your water if you are tainting it a lot, but um, I'm okay. I, I don't mind it being like that. Light little task, wiping off the paint. See, I've just wiped it off. Dab it out into some of that pink. It has a nice blend. Now that with these second coats and all these coats of paint, it gives it a nice vibrancy. Two coats or three coats are always really good for vibrancy. Light little touches with hardly any paint towards the yellow side or just go back to a little bit more white on your brush. I'll take more white. I have to wash that off. If you have more bright yellow in here, just go to some yellow and some white, no red. If you need to keep it consistent and you want it more yellowy, you can blend that out again. or just plain white. Okay, so right up here where it's merging together. Um, colors that you can put in here are really up to you. Keep it light though. I wouldn't do dark colors at all. I would do light colors and you can pick your favorite. For example, you can just do a bit of orange coming in. You can, I think a safe color is pink because it works okay over here and it works okay over here. So a light pink to go to your, like, you know, the magenta, Add a little bit of white, wipe off most of the paint. And when I just dab it, it doesn't make too much of a fuss with the color surrounding it. It's just a little bit of a filler. Hardly any paint, just light little taps to get that filled in. Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So I merged that. There's um, in the background, there's pretty much one more thing that I want to do is I would say let it fully dry. We're going to put in the dark color. So we're going to deepen up the blue here coming in on the side. I like to do indigo or some Persian blue. So Indigo is really just equal parts blue and red, maybe a touch more blue, but it's just instead of using black, it deepens it up because black and blue, I find are too gray compared to your vibrant colors. You'll don't don't test it out. But if you want to, you can. But um, the safe combination is equal parts of blue and red. It looks just like dark blue. And uh, it does the deep, more vinette look around the edges. Um, all right, I was gonna put a little bit of pink here. Some of that light pink, just around some of this orange. And you can touch up on any white around the surrounding Eiffel Tower area, now that it's a bit more dry. 
Ooh, just a little bit coming from. You can go over it a tiny bit as long as you can still see where it is. You just kind of drag it out, dab, drag it out. Start from inside outwards. Doing some down here as well. Don't worry if it's not perfectly white. It's actually not supposed to be perfectly white. We like that small little hint of other colors around the area. So that's probably a good thing. And if you're wondering, okay, how much white should I put? That's your call. Um, some of the white comes out a little bit further than others. So if you're doing some white, you can come out a little bit further here and there to give it a little bit more of a whimsical look, kind of more magical. It's already magical, but still. This is my lighter version of my yellow. I had a lot of dark orange. Here we go. Okay. So let's finish up our background with the dark blue color I was just talking about. I'm just drying off my brushes and I dropped my brush on my pants. I'm just wiping that off. Sorry, just give me one second. Okay. Now, let's see. Oh, right. Equal parts. Actually, I don't want any white into it, so start fresh. Equal parts blue and red. Absolutely no white. looks yeah it's pretty dark you can add an extra dot of blue if it's a bit if you want it more blue overall right so you can do more purple or you can do a bit more blue this is my big brush I'm just lightly tapping it in you just very gently I'm trying not to go too far in just mostly get the sides we can blend it out with more of a dry brush little taps over here. Remember, you can add a dot of black if you prefer to do that. I didn't add any black into this. I was washing that off. I'm going to use my dry, just a round dry brush here. I'll press, you don't need to press as hard, but just circle that, get it a bit more blended in. Wipe off the paint, keep going.
keep wiping off that paint. Okay, and I'm just going in and putting in a little bit of my lighter magenta with a touch of purple on top of that. Just want a little bit more brightness. Actually, on top of the dark purple, I think it stands out a little bit more. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to blow dry this. Yeah, I'm going to blow, the, blow dry this for a minute. And then um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to add in the stars right after. So you're going to add the stars when you're done with your background. So you want to make sure that this is how you want it to be. If you need to do touch-ups, I know this side is very finicky with some colors, trying to blend to your liking. I know it's mostly that orange getting it, I guess, a bit more into this pinky purple without it turning too brown, right? All right, so if you want to skip ahead to stars, 
You can skip ahead to stars. I'm going to do one last little um, light magenta right here on top of the purple uh, just for a, that last vibrancy kick and then a little touch of orange or um, even light pink around here actually. Or a dry brush. A little hint of magenta for that last. A little vibrancy in the sky. Wipe off the paint. So this is good to hide any brown spots. Like right here, I feel like it's a bit brownish in color. This is the same colors I've been using. When in doubt, I would say a light pink is really good. So red and a scoop of white. And then yellow, dot of red, and a little bit of white like we made our orange before, a light orange. Wipe off the extra paint and then just blend it into some of the pink. It has a nice merge of colors. Okay, so now to splatter a little bit of the stars on top. You can use various brushes. You can use a large, medium, detailed brush. The larger the brush, the bigger the splatters are gonna be. So if you use a more detailed brush, they're gonna be tinier and they're not, gonna, they're not likely to leave a lot of blotchy um, yellow paint. You'll see um, if you, you want to practice you can probably see you just need a lot of water and a little bit of white so it's very it's just the opposite of what we've been doing so watery that it's dripping and just a little bit of white so that you're nicely coating the whole thing so you don't want a whole ton of paint on it and you're just going to like pull it just pull it back and just flick it on i'm just going to do that everywhere even right on top of the Eiffel Tower. Put everywhere so I get all that coverage. And I'm actually going to dot in a few stars with the back handle of my smaller brush. So just poke it in the white and then you can make your stars fill it in a tiny bit more. You can get various sizes, which is what we want to achieve in a galaxy. The bigger stars, closer, further away to us type of perspective. And they're not all evenly spaced out, of course. They don't want that. You can make a constellation in the sky too, or a bunch of them. Sometimes I like to cluster them just a little bit in certain spots. Yeah, there we go.
No, I kind of like the orange. It gives it like a Milky Way look on the side. The orange with the pinky purple. It's pretty interesting. And the other one, it's more a bit more pinkish. So if you prefer orange, you can do more orange. Or if you prefer pink, you could put more pink. All right, so now we can just focus on filling in our Eiffel Tower. If you happen to have gold paint and you want to use gold, you can use gold for, I mean metallic gold. You can also, if you want to just use gold for, it's not metallic, you can too, but I, the metallic, you can make it a bit more shiny on the Eiffel Tower if you want to. So we're going to start with um, like a really dark brown, almost black looking, and then we put highlights. And you can use your gold for that. I would say since metallic colors are more transparent, you want to just wash it down with the gold afterwards. But, but we're going to make a gold looking color as highlights on top. Okay. So let's mix our brown and, you know, quite honestly, it's super easy to mix. Scoop of red and yellow, equal parts. And nice pea size of black. We're going to get that super dark chestnut brown, almost black looking color. And people are asking, okay, time zone. Uh, we are Eastern time. And uh, we have our website too. You can see on there a little bit better on, you know, what's happening, supplies, and what time. And of course, this is available for repeat. You can replay this anytime, no expiry. Okay, this is a big brush, by the way, but I'm going to just get some things filled in while I have this brush. I'm gonna go a little bit lower than that line that I've made originally. Is, remember, this is all filled in up here. Even these things are filled in, so fill these in too. I am not sticking with this brush. It's making me nervous. I'm using my detail brush. So this is a number four. You can use a number two. It's actually very similar to a number two. If you're seeing too much of an actual chocolate brown color being made, you can just add more black to not make it too obvious that this is a full on chocolate brown, but we want it to, we want it to be quite dark. And black and gold are really good colors together. Black, just trying to concentrate. So I want it more on the darker side than on the very obvious brown side. Touch of water, pick up your paint, continue on. So some of the good things about when you're filling this in is if you happen to make little mistakes, you don't need to be upset and freak out about it because when it's dry, not while it's wet, Afterwards, just fill it, the rest in, get it done, blow dry it. Then just take white and trim around because it's white in the background behind it. It's all glowing with white. So just, it's easy. You just trim it with white fixed. Just do it afterwards. Fill it all in. You'll see what, what you need to trim around if anything needs to be trimmed. I will say that as you're filling it in, try to keep it consistent. So these, see these ledges that we've made? Try to keep these horizontal, right? And just go with the groove of it all. So this arch, just fill it in like you're filling in an arch, you're just going around. Um, more vertical, you know, on this angle here, up and down, and then horizontal through these 
ledges here. And then of course, vertical up here. Left-handed problems, I just smudged the star. <laughs> I was gonna turn into a shooting star, but it seems like it won't work out very well for me. Just put a little bit of green back there, okay. Welcome in. Don't mind me, I'm silent because I'm trying to concentrate on, you know, not making a whole bunch of errors here. Okay, I'm going to take a little step back, see what any adjustments need to be made. I feel like, okay, so in the, oops, we lost it. Um, in the middle, I could probably go a little bit thicker. I don't want it overly thin right here. Now that I'm looking at it filled in. So nice and, yeah, just put a little bit more. Now I'm going to blow dry it. Oh, right, I need to do the top. So remember the top, we had a slightly bigger rectangle. And then finally at the top,
Okay, so I'm gonna blow dry that again. Makes it easier to put in the details on top. Feel free to grab gold if you have your metallics, but if you have a premixed gold that's not metallic, which is not very common, um, it's actually, oh, this is metallic, so this is paint. So if you have gold, put it on your plate, use it for afterwards. We're gonna make a bit of gold with our brown and I'm gonna use some of that. Okay, all dry. All right, so even if it's still a little bit damp, it's okay. With our detailed brush, we're gonna take a little scoop of white to just a little bit of our brown. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. And a touch of red. And you have a gold. It's funny, this looks more gold. <laughs> this is just very glittery and, and metallic. So that's a good wash for on top. So again, you take, you only need a little scoop of your brown. You don't want too much. You're gonna add more yellow and a little extra dab of red because when you add more yellow, it actually starts looking greenish, but the red counterbalances it and makes it warmer into that gold. So from here, a little touch of water, I'm just going to wipe off a little bit of this paint. So kind of like a dry brush technique, technique again. From, let's start with some obvious spots, okay? So I'm going to streak across very lightly. Nothing is gonna be perfect, by the way. It's not supposed to be all perfectly outlined. It's kind of a, you see little elements here and there. So one of the things if you're you're really feeling fancy. I'm just gonna go along some of the edges like this for these parts right here, okay? And then to give it more of a 3D look, I'm not going to outline the bottom, not doing that. Um, the reason is, actually we won't go over the reasons, it's way too complicated. The reason is, um, uh, sorry, the place I'm putting it is just a little bit higher, actually around the middle, okay? So think about the middle. We're not going along the very bottom. So this line is actually gonna go right up in here. Just like that. See, it's going, it looks like, see? It looks like it's going up and this is the other side. You're looking at it from down upwards. You see the other side. Go up along this side, up to the top. Okay, we're gonna go right up to where that gold that last bar that we put in. The last line that we put right here, about midway down. We're gonna bring that line right up to around there. So the way that I fill this in, it's got a lot of texture, but to keep it simple, you can do some like little crisscrosses, some cross hatching, very loosely, not perfect. In fact, I want it to be 
um, you know, all over the place. Don't use too much paint. Only use more paint if you want it to be sticking. You want it to show more of the texture so you can do a little bit thicker strokes, but see, that should do the job. Okay, so a little bit more. Not too much paint on the brush. Uh, this part here is pretty easy. Go on the sides of it again and do a bit of that cross hatching, just very loosely on each side, so not directly in the middle. A bit on the side and the side. It's like it's picking up some of the highlights from the edges, but the middle is a bit darker. And a little outline up here. With a little a couple taps or cross hatching into that top part that we just put in at the very top. And let's do this part again here. So this part is different. Um, actually, this, okay, so I'm going to go, see I'm doing this arch a little bit, leaving about a centimeter from where the bottom of that brown is. It gives it that look that you can see on the other side a little bit more. So if you happen to put too much and you went right to the bottom, you're gonna go back. Maybe just take black actually. Black is great for shadows, as we know. You just put that in directly underneath. And you have more of a 3D look. Excellent. Just touching up on this, this line, I didn't want to lose it too much. I want it to be a bit more obvious. Okay. And so from top here, Go straight across. And straight across at the bottom here. On the edges, of course like we've been doing consistently throughout all of it. And a little bit in the middle here. Loosely doing a bit of cross hatching. Just along some of the sides on this side.
And afterwards, whenever you feel like you're done with that, you can clean up some lines with white. White is good. I said to wait for it to dry. You can see that's pretty important. And then what I'm going to do is finish it up with the um, all of that shrubbery and some plants and stuff, leafiness, the foliage that's around. Okay, for brushes. I would say start with black and then do a little bit of highlight with some gold. Keep it, it's kind of nice. Um, not too much, but you can do more if you like it with a bit more. Start with black, we're gonna start from the corner and bring it out to where, just wherever we feel like ending it. I'm gonna use this flat, about an inch long, yeah, it's about an inch. And I want to kind of pick it up this way. You can also use Anything round, like a mop brush, you get good texture going too. So you can try both. Touch water, not too much water actually. You want more of a dry brush. So what makes it easier is to fill in the bottom first. Because it's just not as much work. Why work too hard? You can still do it without having to put all of that effort of just dabbing all of it in. I just get a base going right along the very bottom. Not too big. I'm just going to drag it up with our brush. So straight on. Unless you have a frayed brush you want to use. Frayed brushes are great. I'm going to press with the tip of the brush. Get this going. You do have to make sure you're covering the bottom of your Eiffel Tower. We don't want a floating one. Floating ones are no, no fun. I mean, it can actually it is fun, but it's just some of us are probably not going for that. Okay, so we do this. And I'll show you the uh, round brush here. You're gonna dip it in straight on, so you're fraying it, dipping it in straight on like this, so it's getting wider. And look at that. You get a spongy look. Sometimes it's a little bit too much, which is okay. You can, we all have our preferences on what we prefer. Over here. Okay, so I'm just putting that in for now. I am going to go a little bit more, but I'm going to control it more with my flat brush again. So go back to this one, just dab it, more of a dry brush, no more water. Just get out all the extra water and just start focusing on bringing up certain parts here and there. So it's like you have, in a way, certain branches, some branches are sticking out. You can also do some on different angles, some more sideways to give it not all going in the exact same direction.
Yeah, it's going nice and up, nice curve going all the way around. That's why I started off with less and I gradually add more. Okay, I think I'll stop there. So what do we think? I'll show you a bit of that gold for some final little touches. If you wanna highlight the tops of these, just give it a minute to rest. You're gonna take your gold paint on, uh, maybe a detailed brush is probably good. Just very lightly, just kind of lightly glaze over. It gives it a shine, it doesn't really change a whole lot. You can't even tell. I'm putting this in, you can't even tell. But it makes it shiny. Super fun. And with um, a little bit of gold, I'm going to add a couple of dabs on the ends. Like it's reflecting from the Eiffel Tower, giving a bit of a reflective look. I think it gives it more depth. See, compared to here in the other side, it's this is, I like it. This is just gold. Or just use, if you don't have the metallic, use your, um, the mixed gold that we've made. And just let it blend into that black. You're only taking a little bit. We've mastered the whole dry brush, take very little paint technique. Yes, I like it. All right, so thanks for joining me tonight. If you're watching on replay, you have, there's no time limit. You can watch it any time. Take a step back, look at your painting. Remember, touch-ups are always possible. When it's fully dry, it's easy to work with. And you can show your painting off at, um, on our Facebook page, you can just go to one of our support groups, show it off there. I'm just taking some white and there's some certain spots that I like pencil smudge. So I just grab that and get rid of the pencil marks. And maybe you'll join me again for some other painting fun. You can check it out on our website, artistpalettederm.com. We have lots of free and Zoom events because we do both help support us a little bit. But we have lots of tutorials for free on our YouTube channel. You can check those out too. Thanks for joining me. Bye guys.